Good evening and welcome to Hopkinton High School for tonight's varsity girls basketball game as the Ashland Clockers take on your hometown Hopkinton Hillers. The Tri-Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. Thank you for helping create a positive, respectful, and fun environment here at HHS. And now for tonight's lineups. For the Ashland Clockers, starting at guard number 10, a freshman, Katherine Carter. <laughs> starting at forward number 42, a sophomore, Claire Marcy. <laughs> starting at guard number 13, a junior captain, Ryan Lima. <laughs> starting at guard number 20, a junior captain, Kayla Madden. And starting at forward number 22 is senior captain Kaylee Sorrow. The clockers are coached by Dave Life. And now for your hometown Hopkinton Hillers. Starting at guard number 23, a freshman, Lauren Cho. Starting at guard number three, a sophomore, Millie Sensney. Starting at forward, number 21, a sophomore, Caroline Connell. Starting at forward, number 34, a junior, Ashley McDermott. And starting at guard, number zero, a senior captain, Lily Morningstar. The Hillers are coached by Mike Greco and Pat O'Brien. Now, would you all please rise for the playing of our national anthem by the HHS Hoop Band. HCAM TV presents another edition of Girls Varsity Basketball. Tim Halatic here with Steve Spector. And Steve, uh, tonight the Hillers are going to be hosting the Ashland Clockers. And unfortunately, last time these two teams met, Ashland was able to come away with a victory. And the, actually, the Hillers have been reeling of late. Yeah, uh, you know, the, um, the Hillers have kind of run into a tough stretch in some of the, some of the, um, the losses of really due to... This is my. This is not on or something. I'm way too loud. He's way too loud. Sorry, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, as I started to say, the the Hiller girls are, you know, <coughs> definitely a young team this year, and they're de dealing with injuries with Lily Morningstar. Um, also, uh, you know, coming back late in the season, and and we do see hey, we Olivia Gladu uh, right for the first time this season. That's like right. Her, she's got her uniform on, so that we could, we could be uh, first time seeing her with her elbow injury. So. Here we go. Right, last time these two teams met, as I mentioned before, Ashland was able to take a 34 to 22 victory over the Hillers in Ashland. It's McDermott almost steals it away early. Madden's pass down low is knocked away. Looks like it's last off of McDermott. getting some of our settings together here. The H Cam production crew, we got a good job by the Hillers getting get the ball back after that scramble. 
big block. those uh, technical difficulties just trying to get things going for you still a 0-0 game with just under seven minutes left as that as that last shot did not find the mark the shot clock violation going against the clockers no score yet 640 left in the first quarter early big double header night tonight that's right, the boys. Steve and I will be doing the boys game after this one comes to its conclusion. Really Morningstar getting kind of swallowed up by number 42, Claire Marcy. Pretty tall, six foot one, sophomore. Sense and he steals it away. Probably could have got a, should have drew a foul there. No luck and instead we have a jump ball for us as Caroline Connell and Kayla Madden get tangled up. Bodies flying everywhere. There's a jump ball. Good hustle by both teams there. Kind of a tough situation for both uh, teams. Tim with their records really were almost a, almost a travel, and I guess it was a travel. You know, it's almost like both teams need to win out if they want to have any thoughts of making the playoffs because they need to finish 500. They're going to – or close to that anyway. But Right, right. Yeah, both teams are struggling a bit as of late. Ashland is 5-8, and eight, overall 4-6 and six in the TVL, lost their last three games in a row. And then the Hillers, as we mentioned, they are 4-8 and eight overall, 3-7 and seven in the TVL. The Hillers have been struggling mightily in their past – uh, nine games, losing eight out of those last nine, and with five losses in a row. And as we look at the uh, the stats we got in front of us here, there's a two-point loss to Halston, a seven-point loss to Medway, five-point loss to Norwood, three-point loss to Medfield, and then a seven-point loss to Millis. Um, so close, close uh, competitive games, but losses nonetheless. Yep. And definitely both teams looking to right the ship right here no in question. a pivotal uh, rivalry game. No question about it. And. It just, you know, speaks to the, again, uh, the youth that they've kind of had to deal with. And uh, Coach Greco's done a, a great job just working a new system in with the new players, lots of freshmen, and uh, really lacking a big a big center type person. Uh, neither know. team has uh, scored. Sorry to cut you off there, Steve, yeah, right. but neither team has scored yet. Just past three minutes into this first quarter, a couple of wild, do uh, cut wild shots thrown up. And nothing has found the mark as of yet. Sense, Sense and he's three. There it she, is. There, there it is, right on cue. <laughs> Knocks it I guess down she must have deep. heard you there, and well done. <laughs> and Amelia has the potential to get hot and, and bomb it from three-point land. We've seen that even last year as a freshman uh, in the playoffs. She, was, she came in kind of late in the season. And uh, this year's kind of grown from that situation and done, done real well. And a three from Ashland. No good as Ryan Lima's shot misses the mark. Oh, too, a little too firm in the pass there from Lauren. And we got some substitutions, big substitutions going on here. Try to see if we can keep up with that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Lexi Trendle, Brooke Doherty are in for Hopkinton as well as Cameron McDonald, Lulu Murphy as well. Some Trendle defense. gets her hand in the way of the pass, almost seals it away. Ooh, almost a walk. Lima's <laughs> drive gets the bucket to fall. Wow. 
Ryan Lima. Junior guard, that's a heck of a play. What a defensive struggle, Ooh, almost a travel. Yeah, Connell almost got cut up there, was able to find help. Six seconds on the shot clock. Murphy probably wow. could have got hit with a walk there and said her her shot off the mark. Trendle fighting nice for the job. board. Up and in, somehow gets it to fall. Tough angle there for Trendle, but she got it to go. Five to two Hopkinson with three minutes left here in the first. Lexi Trendle, freshman. Big play for her. Kayla Madden, really good player. Remember her? Right from years from, past. From, yeah. This is her junior year. Wow, lots of bouncing. There's like a pinball machine up there. And it's good, wow. Sonali Cialino able to get in there on the offensive glass. Put a high arcing shot back in, five to four. Hopkinton still in the lead. A skip pass there. Oh, nice. Great bounce pass wow. from Brooke Doherty. Able to get the bucket. Seven to four, Hopkinton there. I think it was Cameron McDonald, but uh, uh, great bucket nevertheless, number 24 I think got that one. I, I, it's all right, I just want to make sure we get, <laughs> get the right girl, but um, really nice bounce pass, tough, not an easy shot. D3 from Madden, Oof. that just <laughs> rattled. Almost went down. Hawkinson with the board now, driving all the way. Doherty got it picked out of Ooh. clean, <laughs> clean pick there, and then Ashley almost gave it right back. Good job by the refs just to let, let the girls play. That could have been a travel there, but. Ryan Lima. Good D by Cam McDonald. On Lima pass shut inside down. Oh, to nice Lima. Block, she was blocked. Yep. In the pass. Bit off the mark as it goes out. Out of bounds off of Hopkinton. Saw our very own Mike Terosian down there getting involved in the action. It's a heck of a play by Mike. The man does it all. He's, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's a man of many talents. <laughs> it's uh, something on the. It looks like something of. Piece of knee brace. I used to have that same knee brace. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of moving parts there. Yeah, but it's okay. She's, she's doing pretty good. Lily's doing great. It's good to see her back. Caroline uh, Connell coming out. She looked a little exhausted. She played the whole first quarter up until, you know, a minute and a half left. So it's a good breather for her. She did a good job. Pat, cross court pass to Lima. Nice pass there for Madden. Shot no good. And then an offensive foul over the back. Looks like that going on, that is going on Claire Marcy. And we mentioned before, we saw, I believe we mentioned, Olivia Gladu. We saw her warming up for the first time. Uh, at least at Hopkins, she might have warmed up away for, uh, before starting here. But it looks like she's probably not going to be coming in. Has the uh, clipboard. Looks like she's on no duty here for today. Yep. But still a good sign nonetheless to see her up and active. Absolutely. Oh, nice move. Tough shot. Doherty with a good drive. Can't get her shot to fall, but gets an offensive rebound. A lot of passing down low for the Hillers. Good look from Cho. Shot no good from McDonald. But another opportunity for <laughs> the Hillers Falls. Nine to four lead now. Lexi Trendle playing her heart, to, her heart out. Her, her um, nice comeback by Ashland right there. Lexi getting her teammates off the bench. That last hoop was great. Morningstar drives all the way. The <laughs> floater good. And a timeout going to Ashland. Hiller's opening up a five point lead up 11 to six. Wow, that was a crazy shot by Lily coming down the lane, just a floater. Really hard shot, just caught nothing but net on that and extended the lead with just, with just 30 seconds left. Interesting timeout. Ashland, with just 30 seconds left in the quarter, decided to burn a timeout there. That may or may not come into play later on, we'll see. And, uh, but in the meantime, 11 six Hillers. And we've got a long night ahead of us, but uh, we've got good good crowd tonight. And uh, lots of parents here. We'll probably get you know the boys' game later, and, and, and the student section will be coming in a little later too. So, all right. So the Hillers, as we said, up 11 to six after 
almost after that first quarter, still 30 seconds left. A lot of hectic play or to start, a lot of turnovers and errant shots, but in the last few possessions, the offense has picked up, leaving us at the 11-6 score that we see. The last time these two teams met on December 21st, again, it was at Ashland. Just a 34-22 victory for Ashland, so not a lot of scoring in that one. We look to be around that average right now, maybe a little bit higher, depending on how the rest of this first half goes, but definitely a defensive battle when these two teams met last time. It looks to be the same for this one. And just 25 seconds left in the quarter here. See if it's kind of in sync with the shot clock. So we'll see if Ashland just works it for one more shot. About 10 seconds. A lot of dribbling from Lima. Wow, Her nice block. block from behind. Loose ball grabbed by Ashland. Four seconds. Another loose ball again. Madden it. finally gets a back deep from three. Ooh, almost. Just narrowly misses Ooh. the three from about that, that yellow stripe halfway in between the three-point line and the half-court line. A deep shot just misses the mark. And again, that 30 seconds goes by. Still 11-6 lead for Hopkinton. And I think we're going to have the Hiller girls, uh, cheerleaders, to do a little routine for us in between quarters. So... Uh, good to have those the girls uh, with us tonight. So as the Hiller cheerleaders exit the floor there, we're going to be starting the second quarter momentarily. Again, Hiller's up 11-6 after that first quarter. That saw kind of a, the tides turn about halfway through where teams finally started getting the buckets to fall, and then we narrowly avoided that uh, deep three from Kayla Madden, who looked pretty comfortable shooting it. From Boy, that was came, came, in, came inches from, from going in. It hit the back of the rim and the front of the rim and just – kind of bounced out. She, she's she been doing that for three years, her third year, and uh, she's a strong player. She has the potential to get to get hot and, you know, really good good skills, good backcourt uh, for Morning Ashland. Star has the uh, task of guarding her. Difficult challenge. Kayla has definitely has a size advantage. And the pass down low, Just wide open. Seconds. That's why at three seconds she was so open. Just give me the ball, give me the ball. But a little bit too late from Madden, and it's a turnover going back to the Hillers. I'm, sure, I'm not sure if the Ashland coach agrees that it was a three-second call. They were having a little bit of a, a chit-chat on the way up from the, <laughs> at the court as the referee goes by. Oh, too bad. A pass from Cho to Morningstar. Bit too high, goes out of bounds. Turnover there for the Hillers. Again, more discussion between the coach and referee. Ashland coach not too uh, pleased with that little exchange, but still only down five. And the refs not too amused either. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to, to teach them how to count to three. But anyway, back to the <laughs> back of the game. The Hillers are still with 11-6 lead here. Morning oh, starts Lexi pass. Trindle, too a, bad. Bit, a bit too many hands in the way there, stolen away by Ashland. Kind of forced it there. Lauren Marcy. Yep. Two Marcy's out there as Madden with a nice pass down low to the sophomore captain, Claire Marcy. <clears throat> We've already seen a few good passes from Madden here tonight. That one, no three second call on that variety. So good play there for the Clockers down 11 to 8. Hillers haven't scored yet here in this second quarter. Fossbender thought about the three. There it is. Nice extra pass from Morningstar oh, from three. Bad. That was oh, way off go. the mark, but Fossbender gets nice. right down the lane, wide open, puts it up and in, and takes the foul. Chance for three the old-fashioned way. Kiki Fossbender getting, getting involved on the offensive glass. Another freshman making a contribution here for the Hillers. Kiki, what she did when she got that ball, she had a whole big path to the hoop, but realized that she's going to come in contact with uh, the Ashland 
player, I, uh, I guess it was Madden, and uh, and she used her body beautifully and and hit a, a left-handed shot off the board, right-handed player. And then knocks the free throw down to boot, it's putting big, Hopkinson up six. Big play. Caroline Connell with great off-ball defense on Madden. Very active there, stole it right away. Chose hard pass to Fossbender, was able to recover it. Oh, nice, nice dump down, down low. Oh, too bad. McDermott's pass back to Morningstar. Short hopped her a bit, managed to get by the senior. Turnover for Hopkinton. Good ball movement for 27 seconds for the Hillers there. Just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't work it for the, for the good shot, but good idea there. Connell's long arms almost sealing that Ooh. one away, but results in a wide open three from Ryan Lima. 14-11, Hiller lead now. Ooh, almost a travel. Right, Fossbender just got it away as nice. she started to walk with it. Now ends up with the elbow jumper. No good, but Caroline Connell stealing the ball away and drawing the foul. That's going to be the second on Madden and definitely not what Ashley wanted coming into this one. Great hustle by Caroline. She got position and kept uh, Madden on her backside there, and, and Madden went over the top. Picked up her second foul with 5.24 left in the half. And Fossbender had a wide open three, but didn't, wasn't quite ready for it, apparently. Gave it away. And now she shoots one just a bit short. Ashlyn comes up with the board. Oh, well, there you go. Morningstar takes it away. She gets an open layup as the result. Puts it up and in. Timeout. Dave Leith of Ashley wanting to talk things over with the team down 16 to 11. Yeah, that was one of those passes that my, my old basketball coach in high school would call a floaty. <laughs> and uh, Lily did a great job anticipating that, like almost like a defensive back on the football right. field. And, and uh, kind of easy pickings for her. And she's got great speed and beat, beat the Ashland player down for an easy bucket. So yeah, 16-11. Hillers no fouls this this game so far. Right. You know, um, three for Ashland. And two of those on Madden. Yeah, so overall, uh, game's moving along pretty good. Got lots of uh, parents, like I said, from Ashland and Hoppington in the house and get surrounded by some the Ashland girls JV team and Hiller uh, JV uh, teams, the girls. <laughs> played earlier the Ashland girls well planned out subway to go um, <laughs> boxes of that stuff and very distracting for the for the crew here but <laughs> but I say that and we had we, we had, had pizza, a pizza right? party I before know. so what you know just, just can't win over here yeah, you know? I know you can't have it all <laughs> <laughs> that said though hopefully we can have a Hiller sweep here tonight the girls with a five-point lead hoping to complete their part of the bargain after falling at Ashland earlier this season. They've already scored um, six, they only scored 22 in that last game, already up to 16 now, so they should almost double that, it seems, at this pace. But I'm sure they're not thinking about last game, only this one is on the horizon right now for them, and they're up five with just under five minutes left here in the first half. Oh, tough shot. Kind of forced that one, wasn't, wasn't much there for him. Ooh, that's a forced pass, too. Cho with a good job to come to it, though, and nice take pass. it away. <laughs> what a pass by, by Brooke. Connell losing the oh, ball. Oh, nice hustle. effort there to save it as she was falling. Hot potato a bit right, right a now. Seconds. Ashland manages to come away with it. A little chaotic there. To say the least. Lima oh, a lot, a lot slapped of. hard when she shot that. No call made. Could have been a foul there. Cho looking to press the issue. She does. Right hand scoop layup. No good. And it looks like that was last off of the Hillers. Ashland will take over. One thing to note, uh, Tim, in terms of the way the, the schedules have gone, it's been a little uh, unique this year with the boys early on had uh, like a road trip that was about, you know, five, felt like five or six weeks long. They, they barely had any home games, maybe one non league game early. Mm -hmm. And then they've been playing at home for, for quite a long time, uh, you know, most every game in a row. 
Um, and that, that means the Hiller girls have been on the road for a while. So a lot of these right. losses that you're talking about have been on the road. So they, I think they have some home games coming up, which might help them to level off uh, their record. Ooh, almost a travel. You're right. The last uh, four of the last five Hiller games have been away with their one home game coming again with a loss at, uh, versus Norwood. Sensity launches a three just a bit short. McDermott grabs the offensive glass. Nice. Cho finds himself open, almost traveled there. Probably got away with one there, but Ashland recovers the loose ball. Good ball movement there, just couldn't get a, a shot off. Uh, that, oh, no, that, that looked like a walk to me. <laughs> Look at Coach Greco. Is, like, give me a break. It looked like about three steps there, but it was a great shot yeah. by Madden. However many steps she took, it was a good a good finish. High off the board, a lot of English off the... There's another similar shot. Ref's letting them play. No one warning Madden as Doherty came behind her and poked it loose and it looked like a late foul call there. I'm not that quite might sure be on Madden. why he took... I think that was a clean steal. It should, it's, it, if there's a foul, it should be on Madden in there because Brooke really, I'm yeah, not sure. Maybe looks just like went from out of bounds Coach or something. Greco's uh, reaction that the foul was called against Hopkinton. We're just trying to get clarification if it was a foul or, uh, oh, I guess it was. Boy, that's, I, I'd have to disagree uh, strongly with that one, but. Brooke did a great job kind of sneaking up from behind, and then Madden fouled her on the way out after she's got the steal. But anyway, that was a kind of a homer, homer comment. <laughs> a nice move, no good. Shot down low, no good from Ashland, but Trendle grabs the rebound. And Ashland wanted the call going against Lily there, but Lily got uh, Lily drew the foul there. Doesn't seem to me like there was much contact from her, but either way, that foul going against Catherine Carter. The coach uh, Dave Lith having conversations with both refs. Oh, nice no look pass by Connell. Good defense there from Ashley. As Trendle was stuck with nowhere to go, and Madden stole it away. The deep three. From Ashley and no good, Ryan Lima. Whoa. Caroline Connell ends up with this ball. A lot of bodies hitting the floor in this one. Lulu Murphy drives. Wow. Tough, hard bank. Gets it to fall, 18-13. It's a heck of a shot and a big bucket. The Hillers hadn't had a bucket in a little while. Under two minutes to go in the half. Ooh, that, that's got to be a travel or something. This time, Hopkinton gets the traveling call they were looking for. As Madden has been kind of throwing herself into defenders without much room to get through. This time, Hopkinton takes advantage. Ashland with a little trap, half court trap, looking for a turnover. Murphy oh, drives nice. a nice bounce pass down oh, low, too bad. but Trendle couldn't hit the shot. Whoa. Lima drives out of control, offensive board. Again, a lot of out of control play from the clockers his last couple of minutes. A lot, of, a lot of action going on here in the Athletic Center here tonight. It's only the first half, first of four halves we have tonight, so. That's right. Just a minute and 20 seconds left in this one, however, with Hopkinton up five. Murphy. Oh, too bad. Pass that looked like right to Madden that time as she takes it away. Another steal for Madden. Good D by the Hillers. Plenty of time in the shot clock, 15 seconds. Pass down low is Almost knocked away. Connell fighting for it. With Turner of Ashland in another jump ball. This one stays with Hopkinton. Caroline Connell, lots of quality minutes tonight. She may not show up in the score sheet with some of her, uh, you know, with points and things, but that, that's ex exhibit A of her hustle. And uh, she's had a few plays like that tonight. Oof. Morning starts pass. Oh, forced it. 
picked right away, well, and then too aggressive was Trendle. Ran right into the back of Aaron Flynn. Not necessarily a bad foul, although it was a pretty full contact. <laughs> uh, nobody got hurt, which is what I meant to say, but uh, plenty of room for the Hillers to waste a foul there with only a second or third foul in the half. Flynn's pass inside is off the mark, stolen away. Morningstar Ooh, had, a, had, had an opportunity. Pass inside oh, to Connell. Nice. Great dish off to Trendle. Great Beautiful. pass there from Caroline Connell. She found Trendle, who's able to knock the layup down. 20 to 13. 15 seconds left. Shot clock is off. And an offensive foul. This one going against Cialino. A bit too aggressive on the screen there. Well, she had the screen set, Tim, like, you know, to your point, and, and then she just. Moved her feet and, and her body into Lily there, drew the foul on herself. <laughs> See if they can. Oh. Pass inside, Ooh, Chilino again, fouls. getting another foul. Caroline Connell doing a great job this game. Again, not everything's going to be mentioned in the box score, but getting in Ooh, gotta position. Launch it. Gotta launch it. Murphy, too, no, too, too late on the bounce pass. Not quite aware of how much time they had left, but. The Hillers up 20 to 13 after the first half. And again, after scoring 22 points in that first game against Ashland, probably a much better taste going into halftime this game, up seven with a chance to kind of end this recent losing streak. Yeah, and it kind of keeps the uh, good energy by the Hillers tonight so far. And um, both teams playing, coming out, you know, playing scrappy ball. And it's good to have a seven point lead going into the halftime. And it uh, looks like the Hiller cheerleaders are going to get it going again so we'll, we'll hand it off to them as we go into halftime and we'll see you in the second half
Tim Palatic and C. Spector back with you here for the second half, which should be starting any moment now. The Hillers maintaining a seven point advantage, up 20 to 13. And Steve, we saw um, really kind of a tale of two halves within that first half here. Um, kind of spurts of great defensive play and then some spurts of good shot selection and getting some buckets to fall. What do you think we're going to see here in the second? Well, I think both teams are are hungry for a, a W. I mean, they're, right. they're both uh, in, in contention to make the playoffs, but they both really need to win the majority of their games. Right. Um, you know, the rest the rest of the season, they both, you know, both teams are capable of lighting it up. They, you know, Ashland's guards, Madden and uh, Lima, you can see their, their talent and some of their, uh, and the Marcy sisters, Lauren and Claire, you know, have some height. So I, I think it's going to be a tight second half and it's probably going to, be you know a, a fantastic finish that'd be great for us great for everybody here marcy down low to start an yeah. open offensive board nice block by lily for Catherine carter she could not Careful. convert the shot hockerton takes over now sensony open for three Ooh. just rattles out madden finds lima lima takes the hit wow make gets the shot to fall Billy really Morningstar, good defense there, and good good job by the ref not calling a foul. Just let the girls play. I think that's that's great. And a Lima hit a great shot. Ashland switching to a 2-3 here, trying to force Hillers to take some more three-point shots. Oh, too bad. That forces a turnover. With two Hillers on the floor, Ashland has an advantage. Sensony a bit too... Wild trying to get that ball, trying to take it away from Lima. Foul going against the sophomore. Lima kind of lost the ball there for a second and tried to get right. it back, and then Sensony kind of dove, dove at her and just kind of created the foul there. Pass inside oh, to Marcy, tipped away by McDermott. She was unable to save it. Stays with the clockers. Nice Ooh. drive from Kayla Madden going up strong with the left hand. Wow. Four quick points for Ashland, 20 to 17, Hiller lead. That was quite a nice shot. Right handed player with a nice lefty shot. Almost a travel by Lauren there. I'm not sure how many times Hopkinton has faced a 2 3 zone at all this year. So it'll be interesting to see how they combat it. Morningstar's three off the mark again. She hit the top of the backboard from the opposite side last half. Missed that one there as well. Ooh, little shake and bake by Madden. Madden kicks it out, the open three off the mark. <laughs> and Morningstar got whacked in the head a little bit there. Cowell Kath is called. Catherine Carter, freshman guard. <clears throat> Starter. Don't to see too many freshman starters. Uh, I mean, it happens right. occasionally. Right, right. <clears throat> and Hopkinton got an open three on their last possession here. Let's see what they can do against the 2 3. Oh, nice up and down there. McDermott almost gets the ball picked. Finds Sensony another three off the mark. Madden grabs it for Ashland. Nice play. Almost a travel. <clears throat> That's a travel. It looked like a travel from here. So, and uh, everyone that in the building who is rooting for Ashland, including the coach, <laughs> Dave Lith, is uh, pleading their case that she got pushed. But I didn't really see it that way, as impartial as I can be. I, I, I saw a little bit of contact, but she kind of folded right over. Maybe she was hoping she would get the call and then kind of tumbled and got hit with the travel, so no luck there for the Cloggers. Hopkinton will gladly take another possession. Haven't scored yet here in the third. Almost a travel yet there. Oh, nice. McDermott couldn't get the shot off. I believe getting involved in there was Kaylee Surrow. Coach Patrick O'Brien, he's still, his hands are, I can't believe, <laughs> get that, can't believe they made that call look. <laughs> 
Chris Anthony from three. Ooh, in and out, too bad. Another in and out. Not a friendly rim here tonight for either team. Madden gets the ball stripped, able to save it. Nice recovery. Lima's tough floater wow. almost bounced in. Ooh, that wow, could have been over the top. Quick, quick call. I, did, I thought they were just going to let it go with Fossbender uh, taking the ball. It didn't really seem like the Ashland player had much of a claim to that one besides just having her hand touch it. But Yeah, I agree with you there. It should be, if it's a jump ball, it should be Ashland ball. If it's a, if that's the call, right? Yep, yeah, and so and so it is. Ashland will have a full thirty seconds. Nice Man's D by Ashland. Inside. Steal it's stolen away oh, by McDermott and stolen right back by Ashland. Marcy down low turns, fires, misses, but two free throws coming. You know, Tim, uh, 4.43 left in the third quarter and uh, over three minutes in and no, no points for the Hillers this quarter. And Ashland kind of has the momentum going their way. With They've got a couple buckets right, tightening the, the lead. The 2-3 zone from Ashland has given Hopkinton a bit of trouble here. They've had a few open threes, but just the shooting is not there for them right now as the first free throw misses the mark from Claire Marcy. Second one rattles around again, no good. Still 20 to 17 Hillers with 430 left here in the third quarter. Sensity drives, nice mid-range oh. jumper again, just a bit off the mark. That's Fossbender. Another quick, oh! That's. Coach, Coach Greco is. Now that can't one, believe. that one looked like uh, Madden had a hand in there more than the call they got down on the other end. And then it goes from not being a, a jump ball to being a, a travel violation. Without that was a t tough one to understand. And I get Coach Greco being angry at that one. Yeah, I would agree. There's a frustration because if anything, that was as much of a jump ball as anything we've seen tonight. Right. Nice box out, Lexi Trendle. Having himself a good game tonight. Hillers could use a bucket. Three from Fossbender. Again, just a bit off the mark. Morningstar fights for the rebound. Oh, nice, nice Throws play a shot run. up under the rim, couldn't get it. Trendle with the board, she can't get it to fall. Good idea by Lily, she just ran out of real estate underneath the hoop. A good cut from Lima, the pass a bit late. Could be three a seconds. A good pass from Lima over to Marcy, no good. Nice box out by Lily. <laughs> Morningstar sees the gap in the defense, her layup. She was a bit too far under the hoop. And then a foul called on the rebound. I believe that's going against Trendle as Ashley and Kaylee Suro grab that loose ball. And the foul is against Trendle, her second. And wow. an offensive foul called against Kayla Madden. She doesn't look to be uh, disputing it much, but not a call you see very often at, at this level, pushing off on Caroline Connell. It's a big foul, her third with 3.18 left in the third quarter. Certainly would have, oh nice, oh too bad. Caroline Connell is uh, is an agitating defender. Let's say she knows she knows how to get people. Um, there it is. Frustrated. Right, right on cue again. <laughs> and even that one, that they they called a kick. I, a kick ball has to be an intentional kick. She threw it right at her leg. I don't know how yeah. how that was called a kick ball, but I mean, still so again, Connell, good defense though, just being in the right place at the right time. Brooke Doherty coming off for a breather. Putting some good minutes for the Hiller girls tonight. Mid-range jumper from Ashland, just a bit strong. Trendle nice fight for by the Lexi. rebound. Almost got hung up there a bit on Madden. Who's got to be careful not to pick up her fourth foul. 
Wow. Morningstar, the tough finish <laughs> among a lot of clocker defenders, giving Hopkinton the first bucket. Oh. <coughs> and almost a great defensive play. At the very least, a great effort from Morningstar, able to seal it away, try to throw it off the defender. What a she, spark. Yeah, she caught it to hit off Lima, but was, oh, unfortunately it was out of bounds when it hit her. But a great sequence there from Lily Morningstar. Unbelievable. With all that, though, Hopkinton only has a five-point lead. Ooh. Lima's lost the ball, kind of dribbled it right into the Hopkinton defenders. Another jump ball called there. This one stays with Hopkinton, or goes to Hopkinton, rather. Hillers could use a hoop here, only two points this quarter. Uh, and it was two impressive points by Lily Morningstar, that last trip down the floor. Fossbender nice. drives, stops, and pops. Nice controlled shot there from the freshman. 24 to 17 now. Not an easy shot. No backboard to use. It really had to use a nice touch on that one. Lima from three. High bounce. Trendle with the rebound. Nice box by Alexi. Morningstar thought about the three. The travel there going against. Cameron McDonald. Most of those travels have been let go, but that one was a bit too, I, I guess, right too right in front of the referee for him to let that one go. Yeah, that was the right call there. I think she dragged her foot. Madden trying to back down. Gets an open three off the mark. Ashland has gone cold after those first two buckets to open up this quarter. Has not scored in the last several minutes. Just over a minute left in the quarter. Fossbender's floater just off the mark, but she grabs her own rebound, gets stripped. Wow, what Manages a what hustle, save huh? it again. Oh. Connell, the wow. nice <laughs> step by, gets her offensive rebound. Good hustle. Dishes get, it out to out Lily. Lily, again, a little push shot, gets it to fall. Nine-point lead now for the Hillers, under a minute left here in the third. Great action. The Hillers finally getting the offensive engine going here after kind of starting off cold in the third quarter. Lima's three way off the mark, grabbed by McDonald. Under control. Almost worked for one shot here. All of a sudden, it's a nine-point lead. It was almost down to three. Kendall down low to Connell. Her shot kind of hampered by the Ashland defender. Shot clock is off. Just over 10 seconds left for Ashland. Madden drives left, nice gets play. it. She's very strong going to that left hand. Gets another bucket to fall. Hogginton with three seconds left. Morningstar looks to take it. Oh, too bad. He couldn't get it to go. Little contact there, no call. The Hillers take a seven point lead into the into the fourth and final quarter, up 26 to 19. It looks like we're gonna hand it off to uh, the center court here for the 50-50 raffle. You are the lucky winner. You can pick up your winnings at the table over there. If you're not the lucky winner, we have another 50-50 raffle tonight for the boys' game. See you then. Thank you. Thank you. Nice uh, finesse there by the uh, announcer there saying, if you didn't win this time, you do have another opportunity. And that's right. <laughs> we do have the boys' game coming later here tonight for another chance at that 50-50 raffle. But the Hiller girls here are more concerned with this final eight minutes they have in front of them again up 26 to 19 with a nice little momentum change at the end of that third quarter yeah no question about it. I mean you know both teams kind of hit the hit, hit a little drought there in the third quarter but a Ashland uh, got a couple early buckets and, and then uh, got one very very late and the Hillers took about six and a half minutes to get a bucket uh, in the in the in the third quarter and both teams scored six points, so it was Hill, uh, the Hiller girls still with a seven-point lead going into the in the fourth quarter. 
both teams need a W tonight to kind of keep their seasons alive in regards to the playoffs. Um, and, you know, the Hillers with a bunch of home games coming up. It's a big game for them. Cross-court pass from Madden. No shot right away. Lima loses the ball out of bounds. She thought it was she was poked by a Hiller, but no such luck for her. Hopkinton takes over. Good D by Sensony kind of creating a little disruption there. Fossbender for three. There it is. Oh, look good from Just here. Just a bit short. McDermott nice crashing job. the boards hard. Sensony step back. Took a James Harden step back <laughs> there. That's hard. I mean, her momentum was going back when she launched it from three points. So she came, you know, she came up a little short there. Little miscommunication there between Madden and Marcy, results in a turnover for Ashley. Nice play by the, the cheerleader, dropping her pom pom to make the pass back to the ref. <laughs> Again, we don't have the rosters for the cheerleaders, but a heck of a play nevertheless. Fossman to the hard drive, she kicks it back out. Morningstar for three. Struggling from three-point range is Morningstar today. No good on that one. Nice box out by Chilino for Ashland number 33. Madden for three. Her shot no good. Fossbender fighting for the rebound. Nice box out. Kiki's having herself a nice game tonight. Fossbender Ooh, hadn't thought about the three there. Lost possession of the ball. Hopkinton retains. Ten seconds. Fossbender Ooh, for nice. three blocked by Madden. Good closeout. Nice D there. Ooh, oh, that's quite a pass. Right, Madden caught it seemingly without much concern there. Three from Ashland, no good. Good box by Ashley. Good, just fundamental basketball there. Shot five, free throw line nice. jumper. Just manages to rattle around. Kylie Hardenbrook, we haven't seen her much this game. Gets it to fall, 28-19. That's a big Time hoop. Out. Big hoop by Kylie, I, like you just said. Don't know if she's been in quite yet uh, at all tonight. And coming in with, you know, just a minute or two into the fourth quarter. And that's a big shot. Kind of extends the lead, which has been hovering around, you know, four to seven points for quite a long time. So that right. bumps it to nine points with 5.52 left in the in the fourth quarter. Right. And we, we mentioned the score of the last game a lot in this one, 34-22. Ashley and took it. And it might be a role reversal of this one because uh, Hiller's kind of holding Ashland under 20 points as of right now, up 28 to 19. And really, the defense for the Hillers has been the story of the game. That and Ashland has not been shooting particularly well at all from beyond the arc. I'm not sure if they've made a three point game yet, uh, made a three point shot yet, excuse me. And while we have just a second here, we want to acknowledge our awesome crew, Director Tom Dings. On graphics, Samantha Dings doing cameras for this uh, game is Mary Arnott, John Ritz, and Gene Kaminsky. Kaminsky, thank you all for keeping us uh, together. <coughs> and uh, we have Mike Tarosian floating around here doing a few different things. Um, it's kind of a general statement, but he's making <laughs> sure everything's running smoothly. And uh, he did bring the pizza, which he we did, appreciate he did, that. Absolutely. Most importantly, the pizza was really good. And back to the action. Yeah, we're all doing double duty here tonight. Our crew will be with us here for the second part of this doubleheader, which should begin uh, momentarily after the end of this contest, which hopefully is a Hiller victory, but still five, bit, five minutes plus to be played. Lima with an open three. She's no good. Again, Easy. more struggles from the three-point line. Hillers, good, good job working the clock down. Might as well, that's, that clock is their friend. Uh, might as well use it with a nine-point lead. Connell steps wow, around nice the play. defender again. Can't get that layup to Ooh, fall. That like a, yeah, again, it looked like another clean steal there. Just ripped it out of her hands. Nice right. job by Ashley. Ashley McDermott. 
quietly, the, quietly having a good game. safe to say that the jump balls have been a point of contention in this game. <laughs> I, I, I think that would be fair to say. But Hillers luckily keep possession after that one after it looked like an outright steal. McDermott fouled. Her shot just falls short. But two free throws coming for Ashley. Just under five minutes left in the fourth quarter here. Ashley McDermott with two shots. She's had herself a good game. Hasn't got a whole lot of points tonight, but doing a lot of great work on the boards. Boxing out, playing some defense, and hit a big free throw so far. First free throw is good for McDermott. Opens up a 10-point lead for Hopkinton. Oh, Second one just rattles out. Madden has position down low again, left hand up and in. It's been her go-to for yeah. this game. She's got probably 10 points, and most of them are left. Oh, too bad for Lauren. Lost, just lost the ball there for a minute. Kind of leaves the door open. And we got Lily coming in for Lauren. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Joe thought she was going, but it was just for Fossbender. That sometimes that would happen with me if I made a mistake in high school. And <laughs> Have You're a turnover. Like, I, would, I, I wouldn't <laughs> want to look at my coach because I was afraid they would take him out, take me out. You know, <laughs> I think Lauren had that same situation where she just had a turnover and oh, I'm getting take, taken out. But <laughs> she's having herself a good game and a good season. Ooh, tough Madden shot. Madden three gets that one to fall. All of a sudden, 29, 24. Right, all of a sudden, five point game. Let's see the clockers have a little momentum going. Nice job. Good idea, bringing it out. Still have a five-point lead. Just work for a good shot. Oh, wide, wide open three. Another oh, rattler. That one goes off of McDermott. It's a good shot by Lauren. Wide open, got to take that shot. And just unlucky, just rattled in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Almost an injured uh, referee there. Sure, I'm sure Coach Greco's <laughs> not too, not too uh, angry about that one. Him and that referee have been having a few <laughs> discussions this game. And the Ashland coach, uh, Dave Lith, as well. <laughs> but when are coaches ever happy with the referees, though? Yeah, it wouldn't be sports. Timeout. Maybe not a bad – there haven't been a lot of timeouts, which has kept the game going pretty, pretty well. Right, yeah, no, this game has been – there hasn't been many stoppages at all, but – here we get that uh, fourth quarter timeout from Ashley and down five, 29-24, 3.47 left. Yeah, pivotal point in the game. And, it, you know, hopping to, I'm sorry, uh, Ashley is scoring the last two buckets to, uh, thereabouts, uh, right, right. getting getting the, the lead down to five or six points. And we got a five-point lead now for the Hillers. And Ashley trying to figure out a way to, bring it all the way back and the Hillers are fending them off so so far right uh, Ashley and like I've said before has had a lot of trouble hitting from beyond the arc in this one but Kayla Madden is a good player and good players can buck trends like that and she did with the corner three there to bring it within five points it was a tough shot but she got it to fall I'm sure Ashley is looking to draw something up to get her involved again although not too difficult as the ball tends to find her but in that same token, Hopkinton's going to have to do a lot. I'm sure Caroline Connell or Lily Morningstar will be on her defending, trying to make life difficult. Well, she's certainly uh, done a good job, uh, Madden has, managing her foul situation after picking up her third right. foul. She still has three. So she, she kind of, that, that situation leveled itself off a little bit with 3.47 to go in the fourth quarter. She still has three. And they need to shut her down. They got Caroline, tough defender on her. Madden's strong girl. She's ran over Caroline, no call. A lot of contact. That's quite a battle going on there. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Madden gets it, fires the step back three. Knocks that <laughs> one down. Tough defensive laps there for Hopkinson. Played good defense for about 25 of the 30. Tell you what, Madden's had... Eight points in a row for Ashland, and what was a 10-point lead is now a two-point lead for right. the Hillers. And um, 
Got ourselves quite a quite a finish going on here. Then and a little bit of frantic play on Hopkinton's end. Sensen, he couldn't handle the pass on the other side. Turnover, now the ball back in the hands of Madden. Just down two, Ashley it is. After being down uh, 10, like you were saying, Steve. Yep, she, they got to shut her down because she's, she's, she's kind of on a roll at the moment. I'm sure they'll be looking for her shot. There it is. Another three for Ashley, and this Ooh, one just rattles out. out again. No problem. Plenty of time. Just work for a good shot here. There Morning it is. Star open three from the corner. This Not one way off the, off the mark. Madden with it once again. Pass inside to Marcy. Oh, nice steal by right Lily. In the hands of Morningstar. She takes it. Probably could have got a foul there. Good decision to, to not kind of take it into the into the trees down low. Oh, tough shot by Caroline. Oh, and Ashley rebound from McDermott. Shot. Wow. She gets in there. Gets fouled for her efforts and two free throws coming again I for mean, McDermott. That's a gutsy play. Ashley, don't know how she got, me meandered her way in there to get the rebound in the first place was was one great athletic move. And then somehow she, she got the shot off and almost went in and drew the foul. Oh, yeah, that's a big shot by Switches Ashley. Switches the first free throw. Three-point lead for the Hillers now. Free throws are always important, especially in the last two minutes of the ball game. Wow. Another clutch make for McDermott. I mean, Ashley just went three for four at the line, and the one she missed went in and out. Those are huge for the Hillers. Four-point lead, a little better than two. Good battle with Caroline and Madden. And wow. timeout there going to Ashland. 2.08 left here in the fourth. Four point lead for Hopkinton. Geez, it could have been too many players on the court there. The Ashland coach was about <laughs> seven, eight feet onto the court calling timeout. <laughs> I don't, maybe just the ref was, wasn't. was Yeah, couldn't quite hear him. Yep. But yeah, quite a, quite a finish here. We got a four point lead, 31 27, 208 left. You can see the boys at Ashland stretching, stretching out over there. Um, no sign of the uh, Hiller boys, it looks like. Not yet, anyway. I'm sure they're probably in the locker room or somewhere walking around. But again, as you mentioned, Steve, we have, we do have that the second part of the doubleheader, the boys game coming up after this one. It sits about 6.15 right now, so that game should be, should be right on time, actually. But that is still... Uh, several minutes away. Right now we have 2.08 left with the Hillers up four. And a big game for both teams right now. It's playoffs still in the still in the forecast barely for both of these teams, but they're going to have to start winning and winning fast, and this game will go a long way for either one of them should they come out with it. And the Hillers have the advantage now, but Ashland has the ball with 21 seconds left on the shot clock. And they also have sort of more of the momentum going on uh, overall in the last few minutes. They definitely had it going on, especially mad and hitting a bunch of shots. She steps back again for that one. That's pretty much been their offense has been Kayla Help Madden making plays. She couldn't make that one. Good job by Ashley. She didn't block the shot, but she disrupted the shot and uh, then and put a good box on Madden for her to remember that the next time she shoots. So, Sensony open, wide open from three. No good. Hoppington hasn't shot well from three either. And Coach Greco with a nice play there, seeing what was to come. Calling the timeout before Fossbender could lose control of that one. Yeah, Kiki Fossbender, boy, you know, we've called a bunch of games this year, and this might be one of her best games of the year. Uh, you know, we say that we, we've been mentioning a few times with a lot, a lot of freshmen. Right. But, you know, the game, the, the season's over half over, so these they've got a little perspective now. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not as green as they were. Right, Coming right. up from eighth grade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Fossbender's having a heck of a game tonight. Um, really early on, Lexi Trendle, another freshman, having a solid contributions. And, you know, Lily Morningstar having a bit of a tough time from uh, three-point land tonight, but she's had a, a couple of amazing drives to the hoop 
floaters that are going in through the lane and a little kind of a precarious a precarious I would say four point lead at the moment. Right. Yeah we saw how quickly uh, Kayla Madden brought that ten point lead down. So that could very easily happen again but Caroline Connell has been tremendous this game um, in pretty much everything but scoring. Her rebounding defense have been key, extremely key into to why the Hillers have a four point lead right now as she's had Madden for most of this game. Twenty-five seconds still left for Hopkinton to dribble off this clock. Ooh, and that, that, that's that, that's got to be that. That should not be a. He's gonna. They should correct that because the ball. That was ball was tipped. That was a really. But she. So uh, he just explained to Coach Greco. To Connell tipped it back over half court after it was touched. And I think that's yep. enough to, to change the rule. Or to say that that tip wasn't the reason, although she didn't have control of it, but she did touch it before it went over half sure. court. And that seemed to calm Coach Greco down. So not much, not often when a hit the referee's explanation does <laughs> sub subdue a coach, not not him in general, but any coach. That time it did. The, nice, the nice uh, rebound floater there from Ashland way off the mark, too strong. Now under a minute left, Ashland. Good job by Lily going to wind this clock down a little possession. bit. But they still, Hashland still needs to pick up two more in order to get Hopkinton to the line. Yeah, that's that's going to come into play too. Not a lot of fouls, and it doesn't look like we're gonna, that's going to come into play at all. The one-on-one -on -one situation. Five seconds left. Oh. Morningstar kind of got bailed out there. Yeah, I th she was not ready for Madden to be right there, and I think Madden being bigger there kind of hurt her in that uh, particular it's, instance. It's quite a collision there. Uh, timeout by Coach Greco. I don't know if it's a. Oh, we got five seconds on the shot clock. I'm not sure what the rule is when 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 a foul with that late. They, they get a, oh, they get a new shot clock. 30, wow, right? that's a huge break and a really good timeout by Coach Greco and uh, Coach O'Brien over there to just to uh, settle his their girls down and that's a, a new lease on life. All of a sudden, right, yeah. They have, they now now Ashland has to foul again. Um, although that that fifth foul does help them in their quest to get Hopkinton to the line, but more points for Hopkinton is not what Ashland needs right now. I mean, that is for certain. I think one thing that Ashland you might see happen here, Tim, is that they may just go for a quick foul and then another quick foul to put put the Hillers on the line and, and and try not to kill too much of the clock because you know 30 30 or 25 seconds, 30 30 seconds can can in a one-on-one -on -one situation can last, you know, a little a bit of time. time right? <laughs> so I, I I wouldn't be surprised if you see a quick foul right out of the gate on Ashland, uh, by Ashland rather, and then another one to follow. They shouldn't follow Ashley because she's hot from the line. She's hit three out of four. Sensony looking Ooh, to look get at it Caroline in. Caroline open. They get it to Morningstar. Yeah, there you go, just work it. There's a foul. And Morningstar yeah. is wrapped up there. <clears throat> and that will, if that is the sixth foul. Yeah, next one will put whoever, maybe they've done their scouting report and who's who's in there that's maybe not the best free throw shooter. They Morning should probably Star foul right there. Again. There it is. And that time <laughs> she's fouled once again. And this time she'll be going to the, to the line for at least one. Chance to put Hopkinton up five. Yeah, so 26.6 seconds left, four-point lead with Lily on the line. And this would sort of level off the records, at least in the Tri-Valley League, for um, Ashland and, and right. uh, the, the uh, Hillers. They both have, would have four and seven records in the Tri-Valley League with probably six or eight games to go. Morning, sorry. Ooh, first in and out. Throw just rattles doors out. O doors open. Madden with it. <laughs> <laughs> Close shot. Right. Madden ready to shoot from anywhere. Right, she was. <laughs> Coach well, calling that timeout kind of saved Ashland on that one. Well, certainly uh, 
Four point deficit, 20 seconds, 21.4 seconds left. Anything could happen here. Ashman with the ball, you know, they don't have to take a three pointer. They can, right, they right. can get a try to go for a quick hoop. Um, I'm, I guess, you know, a couple options that Madden's been on fire the second half, so they maybe get it down to her and try to get a shot off in the next five to 10 seconds and, and then quick foul and then see if they can do that again. So. <clears throat> Easy, for, easy, to, <laughs> easy for us to say, but. <laughs> and as you were explaining that, Steve, we saw an image of the Hiller boys there standing uh, by the uh, locker room there, getting ready to come in. Ashley and boys, you can see in the back of the picture now, getting ready for the second part of that double header. There are the Hiller boys again, right there, who are currently uh, eight and four, I believe, over overall. Pretty strong season for the Hiller boys. Ashley and boys having a bit of a tougher time, I think, at a two and eleven right now. But again, still 21 seconds left here in this one. Hopkinton trying to right the ship after losing five in a row. We'll see what these last 21 seconds hold. They wait to get the ball to Madden. She drives left hand. Oh, on the floor. On the floor. Okay. On the. Yeah, it was before the shot. They're saying before the shot. Just this, uh, I don't know. I got, I got a problem with these continuation rules for high school because that looked like it was, it wasn't while she was shooting. But I don't. You're allowed to kind of have a step and then get your shot off, but not to, not to want Ashley to get that bucket. But I don't know. It seemed like they kind of cheated Ashley out of two points there, and now a foul call, another foul called on the floor. Yep, yeah, I would sort of agree. It was, it was just a kind of a borderline situation um, but I, I think under the circumstances I probably would, would agree with you and, and it's not, not that the circumstances of the game should dictate the call but Alshon has got to get get a shot off here they're gonna right yeah now now all of a sudden another six to eight seconds are off the clock no more points for Ashley and still down four they got to get it into Madden they do she's driving kicks it over two-point shot it's Ooh. good Four and a half seconds wow. left. 31-29 lead now for Hopkinton. Big shot. So, Kay uh, Kaylee Suro, senior, haven't called her no number too much tonight. Uh, her name, rather. Uh, um, and the senior forward hits a big shot. Still still uh, Hiller ball with, with four seconds left. And uh, I guess you could expect a quick foul. Um, and the Hillers, if they can kind of get the ball in and, and kind of dribble it out that would be fantastic right but certainly down to the wire two point game right now I would imagine see that you are right at as soon as if Ashland can't outright steal the ball there but they'll be looking to foul right away it will send Hopkinton to the line for potentially game clinching free throws if they can make at least one or both of them would put them up four with not much time remaining which should clinch it but a lot can happen in between now and then. We'll see what Hopkinton has ready for the inbounds play. Hiller's getting the extended timeout and home home corner advantage there a little bit. <laughs> <clears throat> Full court pressure by Ashland. And maybe there's a home run ball here coming up. There it is. Ball gets into Morningstar. Nice job. She's able to get it away. Waste about almost two seconds there as McDermott gets fouled. That's going to make it tough for Ashland, regardless of if Hopkinton makes any of these free throws. Good job by the Hillers. They, they it, you know, it was only three and a half seconds or whatever it was, but that first second a great decision by Lily is, mm -hmm. is a small little thing but she right. she knew she was going to get smothered by the Ashland uh, defenders and she got the ball back to Ashley who who inbounded the ball and smart play by Ashley to get rid of the ball again and, and she uh, just too bad she, they got it. she misses the first one and the, the clock the clock <laughs> operators started the clock too early because they thought I they thought gonna... Madden had touched the ball it might be much ado about nothing because I'm not sure how much they can, if they can replay that or anything, but the clock did start early. And we overheard somebody yelling, no yep. one touched the ball, and they're right. 
I don't know what the referees can do about it, though. Game is over. And both that's teams, kind of a anticlimactic, but uh, I think they're trying to get clarification that maybe, you know, there's no instant replay, which they, right. I think, I think uh, the coach uh, is trying to explain where the, the, the clock should start as soon as the ball is touched after, after the ball the hits. Event, and, right. and I think the clock started when the ball hit they the thought, rim. Because it, it was actually a very smart play by Madden to let it bounce so she could kind of gather herself in order to get as good a sh shot as she could with 1.5 oh, Looks like, looks like they're going to put left. a little time on the clock. But and you don't want to penalize players for making the correct decision there, but a little bit of jumping the gun, so to speak, from the Hopkinton uh, timekeepers there. And we're just trying to clarify everyone. We're, it was a great game. Well, I, as we're waiting for the decision, we'll see, we'll see what the expl explanation is. First of all, that was a great first game of the doubleheader. Ashland and Hoppington girls put on a great show. Two point. Right now, it looks like the Hillers are have a 31-29 victory. And we're just right. trying to get clarification if there might be a one or two seconds left on the clock, or one and a half seconds, or maybe one second. All right, there's still a lengthy discussion going on with coach of Ashland and then that could be the athletic director or an assistant coach I'm not quite sure who entered the fray there as well but again it's I think they're gonna put about an, a second on the clock is what I think is gonna happen I mean I don't know how you managed to dictate how much time was wasted um, so if they were gonna redo it I would imagine they would try to probably do a second and a half like they had on there but they might just be out of luck I I don't know I've run into this situation before well, I think I think it comes down to the ruling of um, does the ball does the clock start when it hits the rim? And that, I don't think it does. I think it starts. I, maybe, they're having a conversation. The refs are at midcourt having a private conversation, so no one can hear them, and everyone's kind of waiting. But uh, I'd say by body language, we could be seeing uh, the ball going. I don't know who you give the ball to. Everyone backed off the ball. This is definitely an unusual situation here. Um, I think they, I think they're going to put some some amount of time on the clock. I d and yeah, do they give the ball to Ashland? I don't know how they can decide to do that. I imagine if if they're going to redo it, it would just be as if that play never happened, and they'd have a second and a half. Although it, it did happen off a missed free throw. So are they going to give Ashland an opportunity to inbound it? That's another question to be to be answered. But it's a lot of discussion, a lot of finger pointing going on. Not quite sure what we're going to end up with. Well, that's I, I can see the I can see Coach Greco looks a little frustrated at the moment. I just don't know a how much time they can how can they determine how much time? And Coach Greco is not happy. It looks like there's going to be some amount of time on the clock. And, and then um, if it's a jump ball, and I guess possession, if it's going you know, under the circumstances, again, I'm just speculating here, right. Tim. But Yeah, I wish we had a microphone over there <laughs> to get a little bit of what they're talking about. We can only discuss based off the body language, which can be uh, confusing, to say the least, at some certain points. You know, the Hillers want to be careful where if there's a second and a half left and, they, and, and Ashley launches a a three-pointer from you know mid-court or something. You don't want to foul because it'd be three, three shots. Right. Um, certainly, I'd rather be the Hillers in Ashland under the circumstances. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. It's being up two is better than than being behind. Uh, we're, we're having this conversation with the parents over there. We, one point two. That's my guess. I don't know. Just a guess. <laughs> uh, I don't know how they can determine that. So. Right. It's it's going to be tough again. Instant replay would be would be key here, but no such luck. It looks like there is going to be something going on. I, I if if I can tell by where the point pointing is going, Ashley will inbound it. 1.7. So I, I must have been 1.8 seconds left. I'm trying to remember what the exact amount was. It, right. You know, it was yeah. I think it, I think it was like 1.8, and then. They thought she touched it and the ball starts. So this is about oh. as. Wow. Oh, and then a timeout after all that called by uh, Hopkinton. 
I wow. mean, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate <laughs> event, but this, this about is as fair as I can see it. And it looks like Steve is uh, going in there to look at YouTube, our YouTube footage, to see what the actual time was on the clock. But um, with Ashland inbounding, this is about as fair as an outcome as I can imagine. Uh, there, there really is no great outcome because the initial moment was kind of spoiled there. But it looks like after this timeout, when all is said and done, Ashland will have 1.7 seconds left to inbound the ball and then try to get a shot off. Down two. This will most likely be the final play of the game, although we've seen some crazy stuff already, so no guarantees there. But both the uh, Ash and boys and Hopkinton boys are waiting uh, patiently for their game to get going. And thanks to our YouTube, the HCAM YouTube channel, uh, and Mike Tarosian directing uh, along with Tom James and everyone here, but we were able to kind of take a quick look. We, we, we couldn't put it on uh, on live TV, but you can certainly look at it. There was 1.7 seconds left at the time Ashley took her free throw, and then as soon as the ball hit the rim, the ball, uh, the clock started winding down, and then Madden grabbed the ball with about 1.3. So anyway, still a long way to go. Quite an interesting, uh, unusual ending to say the least here. Look, look out for the home run ball. There it is. The ball deep. Two. Uh -oh. Two man, she gets a shot off, <laughs> oh, just a bit short. And after wow. all is said and done, we still have a 31 to 29 uh, uh, ending there. But that was the ending that we were Ooh. looking for. Madden a lot bounced, letting the ball bounce. Somehow she got a shot off, and ultimately fell a bit short. But the Hiller girls will take this one, 31 to 29, and improve to five and eight on the year, four and seven in the TVL. Well, I'll tell you what, Tim, that was an exciting game, and like I said, unusual ending, and a lot of drama there. Right. And um, somehow, you know, Ashland had a chance to even win that game right. with set 1.7 seconds left, and Madden gets a shot off and could have tied it, certainly, but but how she even got the ball down that end of the court was, was is beside me, but they got she got a good look, right. and it could have certainly tied it up. But, good enough. <laughs> but nevertheless, a, a great win of for Hillers kind of gets there in the right direction and they have some home games coming up so uh, we're looking forward to the, the, the boys game coming up so 31-29 uh, Hillers and you can take us out here. Right so actually the Hiller, the Hiller girls have two two more away games coming up after oh. today before our ne for the next home game. They're going to be at Westwood on Friday at 6.30 at Norton on Tuesday at 6.30 and then we'll be back here on Friday February 8th at 6.30 p.m. So a couple more games until we see the Hiller girls here again. But next, in a few moments after they're done warming up and with the pregame introductions, we will have the Hopkinton Hiller boys versus the Ashland Clogger boys. And again, we want to thank our crew one more time before we get on to the second part. Director Tom Dings, graphics Samantha Dings, cameras Mary Arnott, John Ritz, Gene Comiskey, and then Mike Tarosian doing our role of uh, investigator watchdog there, trying to get the time right as well as he could. But we'll see you guys for the second part of this doubleheader.